It's Rinker's Night. Welcome back to Slick Nick's Arcade. Hey everyone, so welcome back to Slick Nick's Arcade. So today, typically this time of year, we used to go to Grinkfest. So this, that was at Grinker's Grand Palace Arcade in Eagle, Idaho. Um, usually fell on this weekend here, um, sort of the second, uh, sometimes the third weekend of October. And uh, we go up to Eagle, Idaho and have a blast playing all kinds of games at that very special place and also participating in tournaments. So in recognition of that, in honor of that, we're having a little family Grinker's night here where we're just gonna fire up all the games, cook some good sandwiches and uh, just have a blast, have a good time in memory of our favorite place, Grinker's Grand Palace Arcade. So in a little while, I'll take you guys in the garage where we can fire up some Bronze Age games. Grinker's Grand Palace introduced me to a number of Bronze Age games of which I had to go pursue afterwards. So the last time we were at Grinker's for Grinkfest 7, we had a mini, a sub tournament uh, based on the game Wacko. So sort of like Kong Off, we called it Wack Off. And uh, there was a special run of marquees done for that event for anyone who uh, participated and paid the, the entry fee. And uh, here it is uh, proudly being displayed on my Wacko machine in uh, remembrance of that, that little tournament that we had. I'm not really good at the game. Wish I was. I take some practice. Pole position, Brinkers had a uh, cockpit and uh, I had the high score on that. From the first time I went there, my score was up there and then I one-upped it uh, in a subsequent trip. But enjoyed playing uh, at the, uh, in the cockpit at Grinker's. This is one cockpit, uh, the Star Wars cockpit and also the Omega Race cockpit were three that I remember fondly from Grinker's. Carnival was part of a, uh, I think it was the Bronze Age series, if I remember correctly. Was it the main tournament? I don't remember now, fan, but it was part of a, uh, a tournament. Now, Carnival, I've been into since before Grinkers, so this is one that I traded for a few years ago and got, but I have good memories of playing Carnival at Grinkers as well. I know uh, Grinkers had a Gravatar. I'm pretty sure they had a Black Widow. They definitely had a DK Junior, DK3, and DK, all by the left side of the bar. Along with Xevious and I think Wacko, if I remember correctly. The Popeye was all the way down on the right side at Grinkers. Feel free to check out some of my uh, Grinkers walkthrough videos here on the channel if you want to see what that place is all about. This is new to our lineup. I know Grinkers had a Revenge of Doe, so this cabinet has all three. Revenge of Doe, regular Arkanoid, uh, plus tournament Arkanoid. 
and having fun with that. It's a new addition. Also set up some of my uh, new wave toy little arcade cabinets and change machine right here recently. So that's all set up, ready to go, ready to play. has a little knocker in there, it's a lot of fun. Monaco GP, this is one game I played at Grinkers for sure, and then decided on getting one. Had to have one after playing it at the first Grinkers tournament that I went to. I think the first one I went to might have been four, Grinkfest four. Then of course, posters from Gringfest Past. There at the top is six. That's uh, the shirt I'm wearing today. We got five right below that. Four is right here. Based on the Vector games. This is three. I don't think I attended three, but I supported the cause by sending some uh, products for giveaway. These are some of my awards from Grinkfest Past. Here's Grinkfest 7. And then recently, the owner of Grinkfest, Steve, sent uh, a whole lot of goodies here. Some advertisement cards, some menus, stickers. Thank you, Steve. Much appreciated. Grinker's Night, here at the Slick Nick household. So happens to have frogs up on the screen right now. We'll go check out frogs in the garage. So as you guys know, I have a secondary arcade room here in the garage. And in here, I primarily keep some of the games, some of the drivers, of course, and then some of the games that maybe the replay value isn't all that high, but they're still fun to play once in a while. Now, the best part about being part of Grinkfest and going to Grinker's Grand Palace Arcade um, was the fact that I discovered these Bronze Age games that I had never played before, right? These are before my time. So Bronze Age, once I played these, and of course there were tournaments as well, I played these in the tournament, and I just fell in love with these games and had to come back and start buying them. So here are some of the ones that I uh, learned about at Grink Grinkers and uh, subsequently went out and acquired them for my collection. So first on the list over here is Frogs. This game was in multiple Bronze Age tournaments over at Grinkers. Uh, the years that I attended. And the thing that sticks out to you about this cab right away is the, the environment inside. Now remember, these games are much older, so they, didn't ha they couldn't do all the fancy things with graphics um, that, you could do, that you could have done in the golden age. So they had to rely a lot on you know, artwork and some of this interior design here, if you will, uh, to make this game really stand out. And if you just look at this environment here, it's so cool. And in the middle, that's a piece of glass. And the monitor is actually down below and is being projected. The image is being projected up there in the middle. So if you see down there, that's the actual monitor. That's what the game looks like. Now we never look at it from that angle. We look at it from this angle. 
there's a mirror and the image gets projected into the middle of this field where the frog's jumping around and trying to grab these flies for points. And it's just a beautiful game, beautiful game, good gameplay. I'd get tired of playing it every single day, but I love coming out here once or twice a month and then just diving into these games and enjoying myself a little bit. But that's frogs. And I have a video here on the channel dedicated to frogs. So if you're interested in seeing it, please check it out. So this was an eBay find, believe it or not. As soon as I got back from, I think my first Grinkers, um, Grink Fest, I came back and started looking and sure enough, there was somebody selling one. And I won this for somewhere around $400. It was being sold uh, as is, non-working. I got it home. I probably spent another 400 to ship it. Got it home and uh, fired it up, started jiggling the wires, messing around with edge connectors, etc., whatever's in there. And uh, it came up for me and it's been rock solid ever since. So, what an amazing find. And I know a lot of people are still looking for these. Lucked out. I jumped on it as soon as I got back from Grinkfest and uh, happened to find one. So, I get questions all the time. You gonna sell any of these uh, Bronze Age games? There's a lot of people that want them. And uh, the answer is no. Uh, they make me so happy. There's no amount of money uh, that could give me the kind of happiness that these games here provide me. So they'll go with me to the grave. And then next, kind of in that same vein, Bronze Age Skydiver was in the tournament at Gringfest uh, a couple of years at least. And uh, again, every time I walked over to this, there was a line of people that wanted to play it. It was competitive because it's two player. I know it's a little dark in here, but I'll try to show it to you. Right, that's a rip cord that you pull. I have a video here as well on Skydiver if you wanna check that out in a little bit more detail, but what a wonderful game. You're jumping out of the plane and you're trying to hit that parachute as low as possible with still enough time to land and you have to land it on the platform under the flag. And the longer you wait to pull that rip cord, the higher that point total gets up to. See that? Then on top of that, every time you pop out of the plane, you get a letter. One of these letters lights up. And when you spell skydiver in full, you get double points for every jump. Such a cool game. I think Alwyn Rubin was involved with the creation of this game. You may know him from Major Havoc. All right, another one, Space Zap. Never played this game either until we went to Grinkers and it was part of a Grinkfest tournament. I liked it a lot at Grinkers, uh, so much so that I bought one, but I don't like it that much these days. My son plays it, he loves it. It's a little too frantic and furious. You have to hit these four buttons depending on the direction of where your enemy's coming from whilst just mashing on that bullet button, the fire button. So I get tired real quick playing this game. It stresses me out a little bit, uh, but my son likes it. So it's staying in the lineup. Another Bronze Age game here is Superbug. Another game that was in a tournament at Greenfest. It's a simple racing game. The beauty of this is it's got two modes. So it's got an easy mode and a hard mode. Four gears. And it's just, you're going around corners fast and you're avoiding obstacles. Short game. I think the full game doesn't last more than two, two and a half minutes, but you know, it's just the beauty of it is it's the simplicity. It's so simple. That's what I love about all these Bronze Age games is uh, how simple they are. So now this isn't a dedicated cab, but this is Super Breakout. And uh, of course I discovered Breakout and Super Breakout also at Grinkers. Uh, one of those two was part of a Bronze Age tournament. I can't remember which one, but I remember thinking this is just a subpar Arkanoid until I started looking at the scoring. It's that classic, 
um, Atari scoring, right? Where they're kind of low in score, but it's so much uh, so much of a challenge to try and beat everybody else's scores. And um, again, a game I enjoy a lot, but I play it on a, a multi-kit for Centipede. So this has Centipede, Millipede, Super Breakout, Progressive, another Super Breakout, and then I think Warlords, two-player. But you can only play one player on this because it's uh, obviously a one-player cap. But uh, I do get my uh, Breakout fix here. I have a couple of Arkanoids. I still love me some Arkanoid. There's an Arkanoid right here. This one has regular Arkanoid in it. And then the new one I have inside has uh, three Arkanoids and one. Hoping to do a video on that cab here sometime soon. Okay, so Stunt Cycle, another Bronze Age classic, Atari. I did a uh, recent, recently did a refresh on this cab and there's a full video posted here as well. If you like Stunt Cycle, check this out. Inspired a little bit by Evil Knievel, I think, and uh, his love of jumping over obstacles. And um, as you take each level, the obstacles widen. So those are buses. And each time you jump over it and land it successfully, they add a bus. I think the maximum you can add is 27 of them. So it gets frantic pretty quickly, but it's a wonderful game to play once in a while. Check out the Stunt Cycle video if you have a chance. And of course, Omega Race. Many stories of people falling asleep in the Omega Race cockpit at Grinkers. A nice, fun, awesome game plus uh, the added benefit of being able to crash inside it, of course. Look at how cool this is. Let's get in here and take a quick look. Rotate, fire, and thrust. For me, this is the only way I wanna play a mecha race, is sitting inside this cockpit with your hands down here Hard to see, I know, sorry. And uh, makes you feel like you're really piloting a ship. And that, that object moving on the right is the ship that you're piloting. You can fire upon these enemy ships and obstacles. Your goal is to wipe them out each level and the levels keep continuing. What a fun game, what a great way to experience it. Look at the black light on the inside and the graphics. You look up, you see a huge Omega Race logo up here, Bally Midway. This kind of gives you some point values. These buttons are lit right here, ready for you to uh, credit them up. What a great game. Again, same kind of deal. There's a mirror here somewhere. Things are being projected onto the background and it appears to be floating in space, which is so cool. Now, if I tilt this camera up, you'll see the actual monitor. There it is. No fancy graphics, nothing. The mirror projection puts it right square in the middle of the screen with that black lit uh, reactive backdrop there. Everything seems like it's floating in there. Such a cool 3D effect to see that backdrop lit up the way it is. So yeah, thank you Steve and uh, thank you to Grinkers for having such an excellent selection of Bronze Age games. Uh, obviously thank you to the Arcade Outsiders for starting the, uh, the whole tournaments and all, which kind of forced me to play some of these games. And uh, I'm much better off for it. I'm going to love and enjoy these games for the rest of my life because of that experience. All right, why don't we play a few of these games? Okay, let's play a game of Skydiver. I'm going to be the black airplane. Trying to open this chute real low. 
Oh, it went splat. It's too much. Ambulance came and got me. Five hundred and fifty points for that one. Five fifty for this one as well. You're gonna have to follow along because this game goes really quickly. So we got three letters so far total. Okay, we got two letters left before we get double score. Now I'm gonna get conservative with my shoot pull. See, like I didn't land that one. money we're one letter away you gotta pull it fast and then you see the flags that they dictate the uh, speed of the wind or at least they tell you about the speed of the wind if they're far to the left like that that means there's a strong breeze throwing you that direction you see how it's blowing me left there you go yep still waiting for that s to show up Now it's just about landing them. Points don't even matter. Still no S. Oh, missed that one. Maybe we'll get it. We got it. They're coming so fast now. That's the S. No. Nope. Thought it was. Just need that S so we can get double scoring. By the time you get the double scoring, your point values are coming in so low. Still doesn't hurt. Still no S, wow. There we go. Now everything is two times score. Now we just gotta keep landing as many as we can. Nice, that was 250, so we got 500 for that one. We hit 10K, I think so. Oh no! Yep, wind blew me off course. I can't pull the chute quick enough to get out. That's a good one. Okay, 10,000. Let's keep going. Splat again. Oh, it didn't land that one. Look at that. Could be our last life here, I think. Okay, 12,000. That's a respectable score for Skydiver. Oh no, way off course. That wind just took me away. 12,590. Pretty decent score. I think my high on this is 24,000 and change. How you guys like Skydiver? Fun game. Time for some super bug.
a bonus level you can get to, or bonus time. If you get to 180 score or better. I don't know if you guys can see the score at the bottom of the screen right now. We're at 30, 40. I'll try and keep you guys posted. Score 290, ace. That's a pretty respectable score there as well. Nice, super bug. And I remember going back and forth with people at Grinkfest to play this game and try to beat their score. And they beat my score, and then I beat their score. Made so many good friends around this game. Okay, I'm gonna try and give you guys a good angle on this Omega race. Hop in here. All right, let's play. Field quick enough. 
before that guy comes around. goes parabolic, nothing we can do about it. Okay, 78,100. I think the most I've scored on this is about 190,000. But cool game and great way to experience it sitting in the cockpit. Plus, you can take a nap if you like. some stunt cycle. Make sure we're still squared away here, okay. Okay, just gotta land these early ones here. Nice and easy, not too much throttle. Can't go too far off the ramp on the other side, otherwise you fall. There we go. Give it a little bit of throttle, try to come out and hit that. There we go. 13. I keep adding a bus each time I land a completed jump. Give it some more gas this time. There we go. Landed that one clean. Now it's going to start getting difficult. Okay, 15. Build up a little more speed. Progressively get faster. Progressively give it a little bit more gas, a little bit more throttle. the tripod which is right by my right hand bad idea but I need to get some good video for you guys there we go 21 I think you get an extended game on this after 23 let's see what that extended game looks like there it is extended play in the top left just lit up Not enough speed. Oops. Oh, it started me over. Okay, which I don't need to play. So my life's ended, and then it started me over. That's what the extended play was. Gave me a free game. Cool game. Not one I could play every single day, but I do enjoy it every once in a while. Stunt cycle. play a little uh, super breakout progressive. Of course, I'm playing with a trackball and not a spinner, so it's a little bit harder, but still fun. Try and break through and get to 
the top side have to take a guess of where it's going to land the ball and try and get there first. If you can get in the general area and you can fine tune, now things might get fast. What do you want? Ooh, that's tough for the track ball, let me tell you. Ball two. We can get it through that gap and that should help us rack up some points but it'll also get really fast Get it up there. five balls. On your mark. Get set. Can we get to 400 and score? We're at 352. Likely. If we hit that gap, for sure we'll hit 400 because you get a lot of points. Now things will speed up. Fun game. If you've got a centipede, pick up this little multi kit from uh, highscoresaves.com. A lot of fun to play breakout. Don't love the uh, the trackball with breakout, but still better than what you have in the game. Let's play a little bit of frogs. Those 
little butterflies are worth 100 points and the big flies I think are worth 500. They don't show up until you get at least six of these smaller flies. There it is. That's worth 500. What's your mark? And then towards the end, one shows up and it's a thousand points. It's like a bonus fly you can get. We're at 3,000 now. Now 36. Just keep yourself busy. Keep getting uh, anything that's in your way. Don't hold out for the big ones. 25 seconds left. We're at 46. 5,000 is a pretty decent score. I think my best is uh, in the 9,000 range. 53. Now we got to get that 1,000 point dragonfly. There it is, 1,000 points. 63. There might be one more for fast. Nope. 6,300 points. Decent game. So if you hit the dragonfly, you get a free game, which is cool if you're actually spending quarters. But if you play the free game, you don't get a dragonfly again. So you miss out on a thousand points. So one of the tricks when we were uh, playing this game in the tournament was um, if you hit the dragonfly and you're gonna play right again after, don't play the free, free game, let it die out and then put in an actual quarter again and try to take advantage of the extra thousand points at the end of the level. Excellent game. That's it for the garage arcade. Next time I'm in here, I'll probably play some of these drivers. But, um... Yeah, I'm off to enjoy the rest of uh, Grinker's Night here at the house, so look forward to catching up with you guys next time. I'm gonna go play some games, eat some sandwiches, listen to some good music, and hang out with the family as we celebrate uh, the place that was Grinker's. Till next time.